Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Grids. In this module, we will learn about the Grid Manager and how to create custom grids for the PCB. We have used grids in our prior modules for placement in the schematics as well as for the PCB board planning. Now we will introduce the Grid Manager for the PCB placement. To access the Grid Manager, click on the PCB window with the right mouse button and select Snap Grid and then Grid Manager. This opens up the Grid Manager window. Here we see the default grid. Double-clicking on it opens it up. You can customize a number of things, including the line colors as well as the fine and coarse line multiplier. In addition to the step X setting, which can be used for both X and Y, if you click on the chain, you'll break it, and now you can enter a different value for Y. Clicking on OK will set these values for the current grid. We can add more grids to the PCB by using the menu at the bottom. There are options for adding Cartesian grids as well as polar grids. Let's add one of each. Before we do this, let's make sure that we have grids visible by checking the View Configuration option. Hitting L to open up the View Configuration window, let's check to make sure that the grids are enabled for visibility. Clicking on the Cartesian option adds a whole new entry to the Grid Manager window. Double-clicking on the new entry opens up the Editor window or we can set up the desired X and Y grid steps. Because this is not the default grid, there are additional attributes that are needed. The extents, both the width and height, can be set by entering the numbers directly or by using the mouse in the PCB view. The origin can also be set for this grid directly or by using the mouse in the PCB view. The quadrant settings are used to enable this grid for the particular quadrant, making them active by checking the box. Clicking on Apply shows the new grid and the effects of the settings. Click OK to return to the Grid Manager window. This new grid will be overlaid upon the default grid based on the priority shown in the Grid Manager, with one being the highest or the topmost grid. One important aspect of grids that has caused confusion, the non-component and component checkboxes. If not checked, the associated grid is not active for those objects. In particular, Unchecking the component entry would disable this grid for placing components. So if you are adding a grid for component placement, make sure this is checked. Now, adding a polar grid follows much the same process but with understandably different options. Again, the same caution with the component and non-component checkboxes applies. Let's place some components on both our new grids. Notice that while a component was selected, the polar grid was disabled. That's because the component checkbox was unchecked for the polar grid. Let's change that. Now you can see the components snap to either of the grids. A grid's priority can be changed by selecting it and then using the menu options. There are a number of other options including delete available from this menu. I normally use the default grid when placing components and routing, changing it as needed to make things easier for me. You, however, can decide what makes sense for your particular PC board application.